Isa pong mapagpalang araw sa ating lahat. At na pong umpisahan ng ating gawain sa oras na ito. Tayo po lamang ay uh, tumayo at uh, tayo, tayo po ay uh, manalangin. Yes, Father God. Thank you po, O oh Lord, sa araw na ito. At uh, muli mo po kami nga binigyan ng pagkakataon upang uh, mag-celebrate ng iyong goodness sa aming mga buhay, O oh Diyos. At Panginoon, samahan mo kami sa araw at oras na ito sa pag uh, sa pagtanggap ng yung fresh revelation sa aming mga buhay. At uh, sa praise and worship pa lang, O Diyos, ay uh, ibuhos mo na ang yung malakas na uh, pagpapala at presensya sa aming lahat na hayaan mong mapapurihan ka ng buo at tapat at wagas, O Lord. At uh, I pray, Panginoon, na ma-please namin ang yung uh, ma-please ka namin, O Diyos, sa aming pag-awit, pagsamba, O Diyos, sa, yung, sa oras na ito, O Diyos. At uh, Panginoon, samahan niyo po ang, uh, ang lingkod ng Diyos na gagamitin niyo po sa uh, oras na ito. At uh, pagpalain niyo po siya ng yung wisdom, O God. At uh, tulungan niyo po siya na makapag, uh, makapagbaba ng yung mensahe sa oras na ito. At hayaan mo po na, na maunawaan at maintindihan namin ang bawat uh, uh, words and learnings na, mag, na nagmumula sa inyo, O Diyos. At uh, pagpalain mo po kami, O Diyos, sa oras na ito, hayaan mo po na maisa kabuhay namin ang bawat mensahe na ibibigay niyo po sa oras na ito, O God. At uh, ang katagumpayan ay sinasalo na namin mula sa, iyong, mula sa langit, mula sa iyong trono, Panginoon. Lord, we praise you and we thank you, Lord, for this day, O God. Sa pangalan ni Jesus, Amen and Amen. Hallelujah! Atin pong awitan at at papurihan ng ating Panginoong Diyos na buhay pagkat siya ay mabuti at at patuloy nating nararanasan ng kanyang pagmamahal sa araw-araw ng ating mga buhay. Amen. Hallelujah! You gave us love, Lord!
for your goodness in our lives. Hallelujah. At patuloy po natin siyang purihin at sambahin. Tayo po ay patuloy na tumayo at magtaas ng dalawang kamay.
po tayong manatili sa presensya ng ating Panginoong Diyos na buhay.
of the goodness of God. Yes, Lord, we will never get tired of singing of your goodness, of your faithfulness. For you have been, O oh Lord God, in our lives, faithful, good, merciful, gracious. It is the very reason, Panginoon, kung bakit kami ngayon ay patuloy, O oh Diyos, na nagsasamba, sumasamba at naglilingkod sa iyo. Salamat sa iyong katapatan. Salamat sa iyong kabutihan. Salamat sa iyong biyaya. At patuloy po namin itong aawitin. Patuloy po namin itong itatanghal. Patuloy po namin itong idideklarama. Hallelujah. And all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so. Of the goodness of God. Tayo pong lahat ay mga kaupo. So, isa pong magmuling uh, magandang araw sa lahat po ng ating mga takapakinig. At tayo po ay ngayon muli nasa gawain ng Panginoon. At uh, isa pong dakilang bagay na naman po ang ating mararanasan. Amen po ba? Kayo po ba ay nag expect Are you expecting something great today? Yes. God will never fail us. So, shall we open our Bibles to the book of Philippians 4, 11 to 13. The book of Philippians chapter 4, 11 to 13. I am not saying this because I am in need. For I have learned to be content, whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need. And I know what it is to be in plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation. Whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. Amen. I can do all things through him who gives me strength. So, Paul is saying, I have learned to be content. Amen. So, let us look at our lives. Can we say, like Paul, that we are content. Look at your life right now. Are you content? Are you happy? Are you at peace? Or uh, do you have many, many regrets? <laughs> Or uh, what state are you now? Can you say, like Paul, that in whatever state I am, I am content? And uh, honestly, it is very difficult to say that I am content because it is human nature you know, to always strive for something, you know, to set goals, achieve. Yun po ang uh, nature ng tao. Hindi na ko contento. Magsiset ng goal para ma marating at pag narating, magsiset na naman siya ng panibago. It is an endless cycle of setting goals, achieving something and uh, you know just keep on achieving 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 and never content so today we are going to by the grace of god understand the secret of being content in the life of paul in his journey as a servant of the lord in his journey as a man of god and in his journey as a a child of God, as a Christian. So, Paul is saying that uh, he has been through 
any and every possible situation in his life. Narating na niya lahat, naranasan niya lahat. And so, he was writing this to the church of the Philippi or the Philippian church. In uh, Philippians 1, 12 to 14, if you will backtrack a little bit, Paul was writing this letter while he was in jail. Siya po ay nakakulong nung pong sinusulat niya ito sa mga taga-Pilipos. And so, being in jail, he must need some kind of support. Diba? Pag ikaw ay nasa kulungan, nag-iisa ka at nakapreso ka. And to think na wala naman siyang kasalanan. Siya lang po ay uh, pinagbibintangan na nag insight siya ng rebellion or siya ay na, sapagkat siya ay nangangaral at siya po ay tagasunod ng the way ni Jesus Christ. At sa kanyang pangangaral ng katotohanan, siya po ay na-incarcerate. Siya po ay na, nakulong. And being in jail, it must have been very lonely. It must have been very sad. Wala, walang comfort ang jail, di ba? Wala doong comfort, wala doong... Uh, Uh, bagay na mararanasan mong komportable ka at masasabi mong sagana ka. There's always little uh, resources inside the jail. And so, he was writing to the Philippians while he was in jail. And as I said, he must be needing some kind of comfort, some kind of support, some kind of, uh, of uh, uh, resources. And the Philippians actually responded. Tumugon po ang mga taga-Pilipos. Sa Philippians chapter 2:25 to 30, the Philippians responded by giving their gift to Paul through Epaphroditus. And so Paul is now thanking the Philippian church. Pinapasalamatan niya. Isa sa mga dahilan kung bakit niya sinulat ang aklat ng Pilipos ay pinapasalamatan niya ang mga taga-Pilipos sa kanilang suporta. Sabi nun natin lahat, suporta. They were, uh, he was thanking the Philippian church for supporting him, for responding to his call, for giving their love gift generously. Sa Philippians 2:25 to 30, pinadbigay nila sa pamamagitan ni Epaphroditus. Yung pong kanilang na, nalikom na offering, na inalikom na love gift para sa kanilang leader na si Paul na nakakulong ay uh, ipinadila nila yung kanilang uh, love gift, yung kanilang giving, yung kanilang pagbibigay sa pamamagitan ni Epaphroditus. Yan po ay nasa Philippians 2:25 to 30. So, kung babalikan natin ngayon ng konti sa verse 10, sabi niya doon, I rejoice greatly. Nasaan na yun? Philippians uh, 2 to 10. Uh, Philippians 4.10 I rejoice greatly in the Lord that at last you renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned but you had no opportunity to show it. Okay, so ang text lang natin kanina ay uh, verse 11. Pero umakyat ako ng konti, verse 10. Sabi po ni Paul, I rejoice greatly in the Lord because at last, okay, sa wakas, sabi niya ganun, you renewed your concern for me. Alam ko naman, indeed, you were concerned. But you just had no opportunity to show it. Okay? So si Pablo, sinasabi niya, at last, siguro matagal na wala siyang natanggap na abasto. Matagal na wala siyang natanggap na suporta. Matagal na wala po siyang natanggap na, na pagbibigay mula sa, sa iglesia. Pero sabi niya, I rejoiced greatly because at last, you renewed your concern. Amen? Ito po ay nagiging... Uh, Source of joy, kagalakan sa mga lingkod ng Diyos kapag atin po silang binebless, lalo higit sa gitna ng kahirapan ng kanilang buhay. Si Pablo po ay nasa loob ng kulungan and he needed some comfort and strength. And so when he received the love gift from the Philippian church through Epaphroditus, he was man enough, generous man and uh, a decent man enough to to thank the Philippian Church. Pinasalamatan niya. Okay? Pinasalamatan niya. Sabi niya, sa wakas, nagpadala rin kayo. Sa, sa wakas, sumuporta din kayo. Sapagkat, uh, 
marahil matagal silang hindi nakasuporta. Pero sabi niya, I, indeed you were concerned, but you just had no opportunity to show it. Okay? Lalo na po ngayon pandemya. <laughs> Amen? Sa pandemya, hindi tayo nakakapag-gather as, as, uh, as uh, people. We cannot gather as a people. Lahat po tayo ngayon ay virtual worship almost. Tayo po ay uh, uh, nagkakaroon po ng mga uh, bagay na hindi natin makontrol. Amen? It is beyond our control that even if we would love to be able to gather as a people, we cannot because of uncontrol. We cannot control na circumstances. But Paul, he was saying, I am greatly rejoicing because you have renewed your concern for me. And that concern is appreciated. Amen? So, ngayon po, nung panahon ni na Paul, ay, uh, well, hindi pa ho high-tech ang, pag- ang, uh, ang, ga- ang mga bagay-bagay. Amen? So, sa panahon po natin ngayon, eh, meron ng paraan ng pagbibigay. Amen? Kaya dapat ngayon, and I think, I believe that uh, this will, if this will go on, dapat po lahat ng mga Kristiyano ay meron ng Gcash para pag nagbigay kayo, pag offering time, real time na nagbibigay din kayo. Because you cannot come and offer it in the, in the offering bucket just like we used to do. Amen? Yun po yung ginagawa natin noon na tayo po ay pumupunta ng church at tayo po ay nagbibigay, binalagay natin sa offering bucket. Pero dahil sa mga restrictions, ay uh, nagbabago ang panahon, kaya dapat po ngayon, ang, para hindi po natin na, 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 miss yung ating, uh, namimiss yung ating responsibility sa ating giving, dapat sa panahon ngayon, ang lahat ng Kristiyano, lalo ng mga taga-kingdom, ay mag-open ng Gcash account. So that, When it is giving time, you are able to give in real time. Amen? Amen. So, ganun po dapat ang gawin natin. Huwag po natin sabihin, ay, iipunin ko na lang. Iipunin ko na lang yung tithes and offering ko. Yung pong tithes and offering ay holy unto the Lord. Amen? Ang, ang problema pag iniipon mo, baka magalaw mo. Uh, dapat po nating uh, Uh, isa alang-alang. Amen? We should uh, be able to uh, give our tithes and offering because it is holy unto the Lord and you cannot touch that. Hindi mo po pwedeng hiramin yan. Kasi inipon mo writing to them, writing to the churches, you know? And, and uh, actually asking for, for support because he was in jail. At uh, si Pablo po ay, uh, he was acknowledging that. Sa verse 10 yon. Ngayon, after acknowledging that, sa verse 14, sabi niya ganun, Yet it was good of you to share in my troubles. Moreover, as you Philippians know, in the early days of your acquaintance with the gospel, when I set out from Macedonia, not one chubby ni, ni Pablo na you were sharing in my troubles. You, Philippian church, kayo lang ang nagstood by sa akin. Kayo lang ang tumayo sa akin na kasama ko. Not one church. Wala raw kahit isang church ang tumayo na kasama niya. Not one church shared with me in the matter of giving and receiving. Only you. Except only you. Ang sabi po niya. So he was, he was thanking the Philippian church and he was commending the Philippian church because in his times of need, even when he was in prison, The Philippian church did not forget Paul. They kept on sending their love gifts. They kept on sending their 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 uh, offering to Paul. Kaya po sa verse 14 at 15 ay ina-acknowledge na yun. You were the only ones who stood by me. You did not uh, miss on your giving. You shared with me no matter what. Your giving and receiving. Amen? So, ganun po ang gusto ng Panginoon sa atin. Uh, tayo po ay wag, wag po tayong uh, makaligta or makalimot sa ating uh, dapat ginagawa. Amen? Sa, wag po tayong makalimot sa ating pagbibigay. Amen po ba? At sa buhay po ni Pablo, ganun po yung kanyang uh, sinasabi sa mga taga-Pilipos. He was acknowledging. Now, kung titingnan po natin, pagkatapos niyang pasalamatan, 
ay sinabi na niya sa verse uh, 11. Sabi niya, I am not saying this because I am in need. Okay? Hindi ko sinasabi ito kasi nangangailangan na naman ako. Bagamat nangangailangan talaga ako. Sapagkat siya po ay uh, nasa kulungan. I am not saying this because I am in need. For I have learned to be content whatever circumstances I am. Hindi ko sinasabi ito sapagkat ako'y nangangailangan ng sabi ni Pablo. Sapagkat ako ay natutunan ko ang maging content. Maging contento anuman ang aking kalalagayan. So I know what is it to be in need. I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in every and any situation. I was well fed. I was hungry. I lived in plenty. I lived in want. And in 13, he said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, through him who gives me strength. Amen. So today we are going to learn about why was Paul able to say, I am content. Eh, samantala ang hirap nung kalalagayan niya. He was in jail. Can you say that you are content when you are suffering in jail? Alone? Pwede masasabi mo ba yun na ikaw ay uh, contento kahit na anong kalalagayan mo? Pero kung titingnan mo ang kalalagayan niya ay hindi po maganda. Amen? Yung kanyang kalalagayan. But Paul is saying, I have learned. So that is point number one. Apostle Paul learned. Natutunan niya. Okay? What is learning? Learning is what you do when you do not know something. Ang pag-aaral ay ginagawa mo kapag ang isang bagay ay hindi mo alam. Tama po ba? That is why we go to school because we want to learn. That is why when we have a new device like a smartphone and we don't know how to use it, we learn how to use it. What do we do? We read the instructions. We read the manual. We read the directions. We read the guidance so that we will learn. And likewise, in the life of Paul, he said, I have learned to be content. So being contented, you cannot do it overnight. Hindi po ito magically nangyayari at masasabi mong I, have, I am content. Contento na ako. The contentment that Paul is saying was a product of his learnings. From what? From all his experiences combined. From situation to situation. From condition to condition. From circumstances to circumstances. These were the things that gave the Apostle Paul the learnings that he need. So that he can say, I, am, I have learned to be content. So learning is what you do when you do not know how to handle something. It is what you do when you want to master something. And in learning, sometimes there is a textbook available to read. So if it is available to read, you read. All right? And it will give you guidance. It will give you instructions. It will give you knowledge. But sometimes there is no textbook guide. Especially in real life. Wala pong textbook. Amen? Wala kang mababasa ang textbook kung paano mo dapat ay i-live ang iyong, uh, ang iyong buhay so that you can say you are content. Just like Paul. But you just learn by experience. Matututo ka sa iyong mga karanasan. Some things you learn from classrooms. Some things you learn from teachers. Some things you learn from institutions. But in real life, you learn from the classroom of suffering, from the school of uh, hard knocks. Amen? You learn from your experience. Fly by. You just flow where life leads you. And it is where you have that kind of learning. Ganun po ang ginawa ni Paul. Di ba pag ikaw ay gusto mo pang magpakadalubhasa, anong ginagawa mo? Pumapasok ka sa eskwelahan muli at nagmamasters. 
Pag gusto mo pang magpakadalubhasa, papasok ka uli sa eskwelahan at kukuha ng doctorate. Hanggang sa na mamamaster mo na ang isang bagay. Amen? At ganun po sa mga Kristiyano, dapat tayo pa'y kumukuha ng master. Master of suffering. Master of trials. Master of pagtitiis. Master of obedience. Amen? Master of submission. Master of discipline. Master of patience. At hindi lamang dapat masteral, kundi doctorate pa. Doctorate sa pagiging pasensyosa. Doctorate sa pagiging uh, masunurin. May doctorate sa pagiging obedient and submissive. Amen? At uh, tumatalima. This is what God wants us to learn. Just like Paul. Paul had a master. <laughs> master of suffering. Na master niya to. And we will learn later on ano yung mga sufferings niya, ano yung mga trials niya. Pero praise God sapagat hindi niya inatrasan yung mga trials na yon. Amen? Hindi po niya sinukuan yung mga trials na yon. Kaya naman nagkaroon siya ng masteral sa kanyang suffering. He is a master of suffering. And I am not telling you to, you know, to, to, to be a master of suffering kasi mahirap naman yung baka hindi nyo kayanin. Pero ang bawat isang, sabi ng Bible, sabi ng Panginoon ay hindi niya binibigyan ng isang pagsubok na hindi niya kayang uh, mabata. Amen? So, every one of us was given the capacity to be able to uh, absorb whatever trials, problems, tribulations that we are going through. And I think, you know, aside from Jesus Christ, Paul is somebody who knows how to master suffering. That's why he said, I am writing to you, Church of Philippi or Philippian Church, not that I am in need, sabi niya, but I am saying this because I have learned to be content. Thank you for your offering. Thank you for your love gift na pinadala kay Epaproditus. I, I, I honor that. I acknowledge that. I appreciate that. But I am telling you that I have learned to be content in whatever state I am. That I am in jail right now. But whether you give me love gift or not, I am content. I am happy. I am at peace. Amen? Kaya po kaya natin yon. Pero tayo po, master of complaining. Master of grumbling. Master of wallowing. Master of naiirita lagi. Nagagalit lagi. Pag hindi natin nakukuha yung gusto natin. But Paul, while languishing in jail, said, I have learned to be content. You cannot say that, that you are content, if you have not learned to master contentment. And it was, paano na master ni, ni, ni Paul yung kanyang, yung kanyang contentment sa lahat po ng pinagdaanan niya. Sabi niya, in my plenty, in my need. In my, uh, busog ako, nagutom ako. Amen? Uh, nanghina ako, lum, malakas ako. Lahat pong ito ay natutunan niya sa pamamagitan ng mga karanasan niya. Sapagkat ano, hindi po niya inatrasan ang lahat ng pinagdaanan niya. Hindi niya tinakbuhan. Ito po'y hinarap niya. He went through the extreme of his experiences because he was somebody who is, a, you know, bago po siya tinawag ng Diyos, he was a Pharisee. And a Pharisee, mayayaman po iyan. Nung, panahon, nung unang panahon, ang mga pariseyo po ay may posisyon, may, mayroong uh, power, and uh, they have some kind of uh, Wealth, meron siya lang mga possessions. So, Paul was somebody who went through that. You know, he, I was, I experienced being uh, somebody who is who has plenty. But at the same time, he said, I experienced being in want, being in need, nangangailangan. At it, kagaya nitong pagkakataon na to, yun po yung kanyang kalalagayan. He is in need because he was in jail. Siya po ay nasa kulungan. Kaya po siya ay nangangailangan. 
At salamat sa mga taga-Pilipos sapagkat tinugon nila ang pangangailangan ni Paul. Nagpadala sila ng kanilang love gift sa pamamagitan ni Epaphroditus. Pero ang sinasabi ni Paul, salamat sa love gift nyo. Pero ako ay natutunan ko ang mabuhay ng kontento anuman ang aking kalalagayan. Kena, ang sinasabi niya, kaya nagpadala kayo ng love gift o hindi, mabubuhay ako. Kaya nagpadala kayo ng love gift o hindi, ay... Uh, ako ay uh, mabubuhay at ako ay patuloy na maglilingkod sa Panginoon. Hindi ako mapipigilan ng anumang mga bagay-bagay. Yun po ang sinasabi ni Pablo. He was content. Sabihin mo natin lahat, content. Okay. So, Paul was saying, I have learned to be content. What is contentment? Ano po ba ang pagiging contento? Okay. If you look at the dictionary, it is a state of peaceful happiness okay ang isa pang synonym nito ay uh, satisfaction or fulfillment or happiness it also means tranquility or peace and comfort okay di ba parang ang sarap pakinggan peace di ba who who doesn't want peace or tranquility who doesn't want that comfort and happiness Who doesn't want that? Lahat tayo gusto natin noon. Amen? Pero sabi ko nga sa panahon natin ngayon, mahirap maging kontento. Why? Because man is in an endless search for something. He doesn't stop. Man always searches for something bigger and greater. He sets a goal to achieve. And then when he achieves that goal, he is not contented. He will set a greater goal and work hard to get that goal. And then when he achieves that goal, he is not happy. He will seek for more. Amen? That is man. It is his nature to... Be endlessly searching for something. When he has money, he wants more money. When he has a house and lot, he wants a bigger house and lot. When he has a car, he wants a more expensive car. He's not contented with just one car. Kailangan one dozen ang car mo. Kailangan isang dozen ang car mo. When you have already a girlfriend, hindi ka pa makontento sa isang girlfriend, kailangan isang dosen na rin yung girlfriend mo. You always want more. More girlfriend, more boyfriends. You know, when you have tasted, you know, just a, a little ounce of, of drugs or marijuana, hindi ka makukontento. Gusto mo pa. Masarap pala. So you try more drugs. You seek more drugs. You seek more marijuana. When you have uh, tried Wearing something that is expensive, like a beautiful designer clothes, you even want more. Amen? So, kung, kung naka, nakapagdamit ka na ng halimbawa, wow, maganda tong brand na to, Uniqlo, di ba? O halimbawa, <laughs> o Parisian, di ba? Pero gusto mo pa, kailangan uh, Chanel, o kailangan Louis Vuitton, o kailangan Coach. Amen? So, you always strive for something more. More and more, more knowledge, you know, more titles, more power, more wealth, more and everything. So reality check, man is not always contented. It is very difficult for man to be contented, especially in this time and age where people are restless. People are always seeking for something. That it is very hard for man to say, I am content. We always chase our dreams. We always set our goals. And we run and work hard to achieve them. And then when we have achieved them, we set more goals. Greater goals, bigger goals. And chase them endlessly. And then it becomes an endless cycle of chasing and achieving. Because we really do not have satisfaction, and contentment. But Paul is saying, whatever state I am, I am content, even if I am in jail for my faith. Si Paul po, nung tinusulat po niya ito, siya po ay nasa kalalagayang hindi maganda, sapagat siya po ay nasa kulungan. Pero bakit nasabi ni Paul na contento ako? 
Kahit hindi masarap yung kanyang kalalagayan, hindi maganda yung kalalaga- kanyang kalalagayan. He was not comfortable in jail. You know, he was alone. He was lo- he must have been lonely because he was human. But why was he able to say I am content? I am content, content ako, masaya ako in other words. I'm okay. Okay ako. Amen. Tayo kapag maganda yung kinakain, oh, masarap yung kinakain natin, maganda yung kalalagayan natin, hindi pa rin tayo okay. Di ba? Lagi tayong nag, na, natataranta, lagi, lagi tayong naiinis, nagagalit, hindi natin alam kung saan nang gagaling. Yung mga inis at galit natin, galit tayo sa mundo, galit tayo sa paligid natin, galit tayo sa tao. Lagi tayong galit. Sa pantalang si Pablo, hindi maganda yung kalalagayan niya, pero sabi niya, okay ako. I'm okay. I am okay. Why? Because Paul's contentment is not based on material things. It is not based on money. It is not based on position, on title, on wealth. It is not based on a person. It's not based on a husband, a boyfriend, or a girlfriend. Paul's contentment is not based on marijuana, drugs, sex, lust of the eye, and lust of the flesh. It is not a product of all these worldly things. Paul's contentment did not come from an, an instant, immediate, or quick you know, uh, things. But it is a product of his relationship and total dependence on God. That is why in Philippians 4.13, he said, I can do all things through him. You cannot say you are okay if you don't have a good relationship, a right relationship with God. Paul had a good relationship, a perfect relationship, a right relationship with Jesus Christ. That's why he said, I can do all things through Christ. Magagawa ko ang lahat ng bagay. I have experienced to be in plenty and abundance. You have given me love gifts. Thank you. But I have also experienced to be in need. When I was in need, I still said, I'm okay. Hindi ako nataranta. Hindi ako nagtampo. Hindi ako nagtampo sa inyo. Kahit na hindi niyo ako pinadalhan. Sabi ni Paul sa 11, at last, nagpadala rin kayo. <laughs> at last, sumuporta rin kayo because it must have been a long time that they have not given their support. But Paul is saying, it's okay because I have learned to be content whatever state I am. So hindi po nakabase yung kanyang kaligayahan, yung kanyang kapayapaan sa mga bagay. Sapagat ang mga bagay po ay dumarating, nawawala. Ang mga bagay po ay uh, temporal. Nakabase po yung kanyang contentment, yung kanyang kaligayahan, yung kanyang kapayapaan, yung kanyang tranquility, yung kanyang peace and comfort sa tao at ang pangalan nun ay si Jesus Christ, the Son of God. It is based on a person and that person is Jesus Christ. Amen? The Son of God with whom He has surrendered His life, with whom He has given His life for ministry. To the extent that he was put to jail, that he had suffered so much. Amen? Alam niyo po, in the early life of Paul, siya po ay, uh, he was in plenty. Yun po yung sinasabi niyang, I have learned to be content while I was in plenty or abundance. Sapagkat nung pong siya ay pariseyo, siya po ay nasa isang komportabling buhay. He had power, he had title, he had position. He was somebody who was looked up to in his community. But then, in the latter li- part of his life, it was all trials and sufferings until he died. And yet he said, I am content. I am okay. Amen? And so if you are suffering right now, let us, you know, vis-a-vis Paul's trials, tingnan nga natin kung maikukumpara mo yung suffering mo sa mga pinagdaanan ni Pablo. So, the many trials of Paul in 2 Corinthians 11:16 to 33. Bakit kaya nasabi ni Paul na I have learned to be content whereas he has been through a lot. So, 
Sabi ko nga, uh, in the latter part of his life, sa 2 Corinthians 11:16 to 33, na-enumerate dyan yung kanyang mga trials and sufferings. Alright? So, uh, he has faced, uh, always, always, he has faced personal and financial need hanggang mamatay siya. Hindi po niya naranasang magkaroon ng magagarang sasakyan, magagarang tahanan, magagarang mga damit. Hindi po niya naranasan. He was always lacking. Amen? He was always lacking. And uh, it was only through the giving of the Philippian church that he was sustained in his ministry. And nahihiya pa nga siyang tuwanggap eh. Siguro, kaya sabi niya, naging tent maker siya eh. You know, he supported himself because he he could not bear to 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 receive fr- from the from the churches but sabi niya ganun it is your duty and responsibility so he always faced personal and financial need he in the latter part of his life he always faced hunger and lack and need ganun po ang kanyang uh, buhay noong kanyang uh, uh, katandaan na But, lahat pong ito ay uh, hinarap po niya. Lahat pong ito ay kanyang pinagdaanan. At sa huli, nasabi pa rin niyang, okay siya. Okay siya. So, sa Acts 9.16, sabi niyang ganun, For I will show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. Yun ang calling niya. He will suffer for the sake of the name of Jesus Christ. So, kinakailangan, alam mo, ang tawag mo. Amen? Si Pablo, alam niya na tinawag siya to suffer for, the name, for his name's sake. That's why when he was suffering, he was not complaining. When he was suffering and he was going through trials and testings, he was not complaining. He said, I am okay. I am fine. I am at peace. Ako ay uh, contento. Ano man ang aking kalalagayan. Sa 2 Timothy 3.12, Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. Those who live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. Alam ni Pablo yon. He was he was looking at the word. He was looking at the revelation, so that when he was on that situation and circumstance in his life, he knew that that is where he is really going to be. Okay, hindi hindi siya yung nashak na patako nandito. Amen. Hindi siya nashak na bakit ako nagdadura dito. Hindi sa pagkat alam nanya. It was revealed to him by no less than the Father that he will suffer for the for the sake of the name of Christ, his Master. Yun po yung kanyang kanyang revelation. Kaya kung tayo pong mga Kristiano ay uh, dumadaan ng mga konting pagsubok, wag po tayo masyak, wag po tayong magulat. Kagaya po ni Pablo, sabihin po natin, okay lang Lord, okay, I know. Alam ko na dapat ito ay pagdaanan ko. Sapagkat sa 1 Peter 4.16, Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this matter. Amen? It's a badge of honor when you suffer for Christ's sake. It's a badge of honor when you suffer for your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. When you are maligned and ridiculed, ano nangyari sa iyo? Bakit yung Facebook mo puro na lang ganoon ang pinopost mo? Puro preaching, puro word of God, puro post. Ano yun? Ano nangyari sa iyo? Amen. And people will not understand you. Amen. But if you suffer as a Christian for his name sake, do not be ashamed. It's a badge of honor to suffer for Christ's sake. And if you are not suffering for Christ's sake, that is when you question yourself. Are you in the perfect will of God? Are you doing the will of God? Or are you compromising? Amen? Are you not separated from the world? Baka naman, hindi ka pa separate sa mundo. 
And that's why you don't get persecution. <laughs> Because inaayunan mo pa ang takbo ng mundo. Sapagkat pag humiwalay ka sa mundo, you suffer as a Christian. You suffer as a Christian. But praise God because you don't have to be ashamed. 1 Peter 4.16, you glorify God in this matter. Amen? And that's what Paul did. Sa 2 Corinthians 11, na-enumerate po yung kanyang mga suffering. This is just 2 Corinthians 11. We don't even go to Acts. At doon po sa Acts, lahat po rin ng mga suffering na pinagdaanan niya. Pero dito pa lang, sa 2 Corinthians 11, eh, kota na tayo. Number one, sa verse 23 of 2 Corinthians, Paul said, In labors, I had more abundant. Amen? Sa kanyang uh, pangangaral ng salita ng Diyos, si Pablo po ay uh, siya yung pinaka masipag. I labored so much. Amen? Ang sinasabi po ni Apostol Pablo. At ang lahat pong yan ay uh, uh, naka nakadokumento, dalot higit sa 2 Corinthians 11. So that is 11.23. The sufferings of Paul in laboring for the advancement of the cause of Christ. It was unparalleled. Amen? I think uh, nobody can say that he is greater than Paul in advancing the cause of the gospel until the point of his death he was laboring. What did, why did he say, I labor so much? I labored in abundance because some did not labor. Marami pong hindi nagtrabaho. Marami pong hindi kagaya niya ang commitment sa pag advance ng gospel. That's why sabi niya ganun, I, I labored in abundance. Dinideklara niya ito and he is proud of what he did. Amen ay ako ang nagpakapagod, ako ang nagbigay ng lahat-lahat. So, nobody can claim the fruit of Paul's labors, only Paul, sapagkat ito'y bunga ng kanyang pagpapagal. Ako ang nagpagal, sabi ni Pablo. I labored so much, I labored in abundance to advance the cause of the gospel. And nobody can claim that merit, only Paul, because he was the one who labored. And maybe some did not labor. Hindi nagtrabaho yung iba. Hindi hindi gumawa, hindi hindi po nila ibinigay yung best nila para i-advance ang gospel ng Panginoon. Ano yung sumunod? Sabi ni Paul, sabi niya in stripes above measure. Ano po yung stripes? This particular suffering refers to scourging. Pamamalo, kagaya nung ginawa kay Jesus Christ. Stripes, by the stripes of Jesus, we are healed. Jesus received stripes by scourging. Siya po ay pinag, pinagpapalo, pinagpapalo. At yung pagpalo po ay uh, hindi lamang basta mga pamalo, kundi yung pamalo nila ay merong mga uh, spikes para kapag pinalo po ay tumatalsik ang mga laman. Ganun po yung naranasan ng Panginoong Yesus. And sabi po ni Pablo, he, he was able to experience the same. In stripes above measure, he was scourged just like the Lord Jesus. He was beaten almost to death. 2 Corinthians 11.23 This suffering was a product of scourging. Siya po ay in-scourge. Siya po ay pinagpapalo. Amen. Hindi pa naman po natin siguro nararanas ang mapagpapalo. Naranasan mo na bang napagpapalo? Hindi pa naman siguro. Next, number three na suffering niya, 2 Corinthians 11.23, in prisons, more frequently, not once, not twice, but very frequently he was put in prison. Lalabas siya, pagkatapos ibabalik na naman siya sa preso. Makakalabas siya, ibabalik na naman siya sa preso. So, almost all, kaya nga nung nandun siya sa preso, nagawa niya yung mga letters eh, or epistles when he was in jail. Because most of the time he was in jail. The devil and the enemy wanted to silence him. So they wanted to limit his movement. You cannot move when you are inside the prison, right? You are restricted. You cannot go out. 
But Paul could not be stopped. What did he do? He wrote. He wrote to the churches. He wrote to the Corinthian churches. He wrote to the Colossian churches, the Philippian churches, the Ephesian churches. He wrote, and praise God, because of that, he was put in jail. We have the wealth of the literature of Paul, which is written in the book of epistles. Instructions to the churches. Things that we can use to live by as Christians in our time. Paano nasulat ni Paul yon? When he was in prison. So Paul did not waste the opportunity given to him. Whether it was good or bad, he used that. That's why he said, I am content. I am okay. I am in jail, but I am writing. I am in jail, but I am doing these epistles. And I am sending them to you. I am okay. I am content. To be content means, I am okay, Lord. Not because of my own self, not because of my own abilities, but because of you. I am okay, Lord. Sometimes you are overwhelmed with things in your life. You are overwhelmed with problems. You are overwhelmed with your struggles, with your anxieties, with your worries, with your financial need. You are overwhelmed. Amen? But you can just say, I am okay, Lord, when you are overwhelmed. Not because I am good, not because I am great, not because I have everything, but because of you. Dahil sa'yo, ako po ay okay, ako po ay contento. Kahit na po ako ay parang nalulunod na, parang ako ay nawawalan na ng hininga, kahit na ako ay nasasakal na, I am okay. Paul said that when he said, in want and in need, in abundance and in luck, I said, I am content. I have learned to be content. Amen? So, to learn means process. Proseso. Ito'y proseso. Hindi mo nagagawa ng isang, uh, isang uh, magical you know, moment that you become contented. No, it is a product of your experiences. It is a product of your circumstances. Just like when you are studying, you know, kung gusto mong magpakadalubhasa, nag-aaral ka at ang pag-aaral mo sometimes mahaba. Di ba? Kagaya nung kumuha ka ng abugasya, kumuha ka ng medisina para mo makuha yung iyong titulo na ikaw ay LLB or law, master of law, ikaw ay mag-aaral ng walong taon. Tapos, siyam, pang siyam na taon, mag- magre-review ka sa bar, pang sampung taon, magbabar ka, sampung taon, magpapakadalubhasa ka. Pero pagkatapos nun, matutupad ang iyong uh, pinapangarap na maging abogado. It's the same manner in our Christian life. You know, if you want to be a master of life, master of uh, handling your circumstances, go through the, ex- the experiences. Go through it. Amen? Yakapin mo sa halip na takbuhan mo. Gawin mo sa halip na i-reject mo. Amen? Yes, Lord. I want to be a master of life in the school of uh, what? Suffering. School of hard knocks. And so, let it be. Just like Paul. Ito po yung mga naranasan niya. So, ano po yung, aside from in prison, he was, uh, nung siya po ay, uh, I'm watching right now sa Netflix yung buhay ni Apostle Paul. And it was so inspiring because it was uh, when he was in jail and Luke was the one who was actually uh, writing it. All right? Si Luke po ang sumusulat. There is, sabi nila si Paul daw ang sumulat ng, uh, ng Hebrews. Pero actually, uh, may mga pananiniwala na it was Luke because Paul, uh, Paul was too old and too sick. Doon po sa pinapanood ko sa Netflix, sobrang may sakit na siya at sobrang mahina na siya that he could not write. So he needed a secretary and it was Luke who has written everything. Siya po ay nagsasalita lang at si Luke po ang sumusulat nung kanyang uh, mga pinagsasabi. So actually, Paul in his old age, dapat na doon na lang siya nagpapahinga dahil matanda na siya, nasa kulungan po siya. Suffering and languishing. And that's why he said, sa 2 Corinthians 11.23, I was in prison more frequently. 
mas madalas pong nasa presuhan siya kaysa nasa labas siya in the latter part of his life. In AD 57, Luke recorded that imprisonment of Paul and that at Philippi. Amen? So, sa Acts 16, 23 to 29 yan. So, makikita po natin na sa sumunod po, sabi niyang ganun, aside from in prison, sa verse 23, in death. Often. Amen? Madalas po siyang confronted with a death and life situation. You know, he was always facing death. But he would always be saved by God. But he was always facing death. Imagine spending your life facing death every day. Hindi mo alam kung darating meron na lang uh, uh, kukunin ka at pupugutan ka ng ulo or kukunin ka at uh, uh, ikaw ay execute He was facing death. But through all this, he said, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Kaya niya nasabi yung mga ganong klaseng pang- pananalita. Ang mabuhay ay pakinabang. Ay ang, ang, ang mamatay ay pakinabang. Amen? Ang mabuhay ay para kay Kristo at ang mamatay ay pakinabang. He was always facing death. And so instead of being scared of death, He confronted death and say, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. So I'm not scared of you, death. You can come to me and I'm not scared because if I die, I gain Christ. Amen? Kaya nga sabi nila, heaven has gained another angel. Hindi po nagiging angel yung mga patay. Pag namatay ang tao, hindi po siya nagiging anghel. So you don't say, Heaven has gained another angel. Kapag may namatay, tapos nagkocondolence ka o nagre-rest in peace. You don't say heaven gained another angel because your loved ones, if they died without Christ, they go to hell. But if they died with Christ in their hearts, they go to heaven. Not as angels, but as resurrected, glorified being with heavenly bodies to be with the Lord. Yun po yung totoo nun. And so, Paul often faced death in his life. But in his face-to-face with death, that is when he said, I'm tired of being scared of death. And so I say, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. He is actually, he is actually looking forward to death. Sapagkat para sa kanya, ang kamatayan ay pakinabang. So, kung ikaw ay na kay Kristo, kagaya ni Pablo, yung kanyang buhay ay naka-anchor kay Kristo. Hindi siya takot ano man ang dumating sa buhay niya. Hindi nga siya takot mamatay eh. Ano po ang kakatakutan mo? If you're not scared of death, what you are you afraid of? Ano pa ang makakatakutan mo? Kung kamatayan nga, hindi mo kinakatakutan eh. Kaya si Pablo, wala siya, hindi siya kinakatakutan. Ang preso, ang uh, pambubugbog, amen. Ang uh, ang paglabor in uh, in 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 the ministry, the strives, the prisons, in death, he, he did not he was not scared of all these things. Ang sunod, sabi niya sa verse 23, from the Jews five times I received 40 stripes minus one. All right? 40 stripes, 40 na Palo, 40 na bugbog, minus 1, so 39. Amen? Some, uh, itong, itong, uh, itong sinasabi niya na ito, eh, parang sinasabi niya na, yeah, 40 blows are, are, are given to him. And so, kung si Jesus Christ nga, he suffered the stripes and scourging, who am I not to? Amen? It is an honor to receive scourging and, suff- and, and beatings and stripes in honor of my Lord. Amen? So, doon pong unang panahon, ang parusa po ay sa pamamagitan ng, ng scourging. Kapag ikaw ay kriminal, uh, kapag ikaw ay uh, uh, kinahatulan ng uh, government, ikaw po ay pinagpapapalo at uh, 
sa buhay po ni Pablo, ito po ay kanyang naranasan. He was scourged, he was stripped, he was uh, beaten almost to death. And maybe in our lives, we have not yet experienced that. Naranasan na po ba natin yon? Hindi hmm, pa, di ba? Pero kung halimbawa, asawa mo, binubugbog ka, ibang usapan yon. Huwag <laughs> mong tatanggapin yon. Hindi yon para kay Kristo. Alright? That, that's abuse and that's violence. Okay, susunod, number six. Ito po ang mga listahan ng mga pinagdaanan ni Pablo. Kaya niya nasabing kontento siya. Sabagkat ito ang nagtulak sa kanya para sabihin kontento siya. Number six, three times I was bitten with rods. Tatlong beses, aside from scourging, he was bitten with rod. Pag sinabi mong rod, bakal yun. Bakal, pinagpapalo siya tatlong beses. Alright, bilang na bilang niya. The Roman method of scourging sometimes resulted in death. They scourged you to death. Alright, ganun po ang ginawa kay Jesus Christ. Pero Paul, he was scourged but to the point of death lang. Okay? Mas mahirap yun. Tuluyan ka na lang sana eh, di ba? Tuluyan ka na lang sana para once and for all, isang sakit na lang. Pero hindi eh. torture ka pag yung malapit, tagihingalo ka at malapit ka nang mamatay, titigilan ka. Pagkatapos ibabalik ka na naman sa presuhan, saka mo ngayon mararamdaman lahat ng sakit ng pangbubugbog sa'yo. Sana pinatay nyo na lang ako. Di ba? Kung ikaw ay isang ordinaryong tao, you, you could have killed me. Why did you stop scourging me or, or beating me? He said, three times, I was beaten with rods. Verse 25. Alright? So, at ang sumunod sa so number seven, number seven, once I was stoned, kagaya ni Stephen. Si Stephen ay inutusan niyang patayin sa pamamagitan ng pagbato. Nung hindi pa siya tagasunod ni Kristo, siya yung persecutor ng mga Kristiyano, siya po ang nag-authorize na batuhin si Peter or si Stephen hanggang mamatay. Okay, so what you sow, you will reap. Sabi si, si Pablo, naranasan din niya yan. Bumalik sa kanya yung ginawa niya kay Stephen. Sabi niya, once I was stoned. 2 Corinthians 11.25 And in the Jewish culture, stoning is the usual punishment when you are committing blasphemy. Alright, blasphemous uh, acts or blasphemous uh, Saying, so, si, dinedeklara niya na si Jesus Christ is the Son of God. You know, you know? dinedeklara niya na si Jesus ay ang, uh, ang, ang Diyos na nagkatawang tao. Sa Philippians chapter 2, di ba? Hinubad niya ang kanyang pagka Diyos. He humbled himself and he became man. And uh, he was, uh, and he was stoned. Siya po ay, uh, pinanish ng stoning. Si Paul po ay uh, pinanish ng stoning. And uh, siguro naman, hindi pa rin po rin natin ito nararanasan. Naranasan na ba nating mabato? Dahil tayo kristyano? Hindi pa, di ba? Paul suffered stoning because he was declaring that Jesus is God and the Son of God. You are blasphemous. You are, that's blasphemy. Why are you saying that Jesus who comes from Nazareth and is the son of Joseph and Mary, the son of God? <laughs> Galit yung mga hudyo sa kanya, pinagbabato siya. Because sabi nila, that's blasphemy. And he was stoned. Next, ano po yung susunod niyang mga naranasan? Sabi niya, three times I was shipwrecked. Ship trek. Sumakay siya ng barko at yung barko niya ay nawasak. Amen? At it endangered his life. Alright? So, hindi natin alam kung bakit nawasak. Binagyo ba? O hindi ba maganda yung quality ng, ng, ng boat na kanyang nasakyan? Unskilled yung mga ship builders. Kaya naman, he suffered frequent shipwrecks. 
You know? Lalo na nung unang panahon, sapagkat hindi pa naman uso ang teknolohiya noon. Okay? They build boats lacking technology. So ano po yung kanilang mga napoproduce na mga mga boats? It was built by unskilled uh, shipbuilders. So siguro wala pa sila nung mga compass, wala pa sila nung mga mga high-tech na mga technology para maglayag. Kaya naman, lagi po niyang nararanasan ang shipwreck. Amen? So, he was always, always three times, he said, I was shipwrecked. And, uh, you know, you, it, that is very difficult. Alam, napakanood niyo po ba yung uh, nangyari sa Korea na yung mga almost 500, pumunta sila sa Busan, mga estudyante, more or less 400 yung estudyante, tapos 100 yung mga uh, iba pang mga tao na hindi kabataan, high school. Nag, sila po ay naglayag mula doon sa, sa mainland, papunta doon sa island of Busan for their school trip. For their school trip. And then, in the middle of the trip, ay uh, tumagilid po yung barko. At pagtagilid ng barko, yung mga estudyante nandun sa mga cabin, ang sabi po, sa, hindi po sila binigyan ng instruction to go out. Sabi po sa kanila, stay put. Just stay put. Yun lang sabi. Ay masunurin yung mga estudyante. Ganun ang kultura natin, di ba? Kung sinabi ni teacher, sundin mo. Amen? Pero mali. Dapat pinalabas sila. Because lumulubog po yung barko. Dapat pinalabas sila. Hindi yung kinulong sila doon. Kaya po more or less 400 students died on that day. And it was so heartbreaking because before they, they you know, they eventually uh, went down, yung mga bata nakakapagsend ng mga videos sa mga nanay nila, sa mga magulang nila. Mama, the boat is tilted. Uh, mother, maybe I will not see you. This is the last time I'll be saying this. Sorry, mommy, kasi naging pasaway ako. Yung mga ganun, sorry, mommy, uh, I will die without uh, without getting married and give you some children, some kids. Mamamatay na siguro ako ngayon. And they really died. And that was just so heartbreaking. You know, because it was something that, you know, the the the, the ship was wrecked, but they could have been saved. Sila ay pwedeng naligtas pero hindi po sila pinalabas which is at alam niyo yung masakit yung captain yun yun ang tumakas ng unang-unang lumabas ini iniwan niya iniwan niya po yung kanyang uh, yung kanyang barko iniwan niya yung mga tao doon yung mga bata apat na ang mga estudyante they could have been given enough time to 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 go out of their cabins and, you know, just float. Kasi lahat sila nakaredy na eh. Naka, naka, they, sinuot na nila eh yung kanilang mga vest. And they were just waiting for instruction to go out. But sabi ng mga teacher nila at sabi ng mga kapitan ng barko, stay put where you are. Andun sila, tumataas na yung tubig. Andun pa rin sila, too obedient. <laughs> Masyado, yun, sabi nga nila, that, that's why, isa yun sa mga criticism sa school natin. Sa schools, you are always told to obey. Do this and do that. Sit up straight. You know? No talking. You know? No copying. No cheating. No, no, no. These are all good and okay. But in real life, when the tough gets going and the going gets tough, kinakailangan padal, pala, pa, paganahin mo yung, yung smartness mo. Yung, yung wisdom mo. Amen? Kung kinakailangan mo mag-disobey sa sinasabi sapagkat buhay po ang nakataya, you know, they could have been saved, but they were following the teacher's instructions, just stay there. And they died staying there. So, shipwreck. Paul went through that. And if, if yun nga, sabi ko nga, yung, yung, yung captain siya po ay, uh, siya yung unang lumabas, okay? As a leader, hindi ikaw ang isa-save yung sarili mo. Dapat hindi ikaw ang naunang lumalabas. Ikaw ang huling lumalabas. Palabasin mo lahat sila. And uh, alam nyo po, yung dahil sa nangyaring yon yung kanilang presidente, napatalsik nila sa Korea. Because, naghanap sila ng may responsibilidad. Hindi pwedeng walang managot. Apat na raan ang namatay ng mga bata, kabataan. 
And uh, they were able to impeach their president. They were able to kick out their president. You know, doon sa Japan ngayon, yung kanilang prime minister is stepping down because he is too ashamed that he was not able to handle the pandemic in Japan very well. Too ashamed. Hiyang-hiya siya sa kanyang mga kababayan, kaya siya ay nag-resign. Si Prime Minister Suga, puri ng Panginoon, sana all. <laughs> Di ba? Sana all. May kahihiyan. Sana all may pag-amin. Amen? Pero hindi, nananakot pa. Huwag kayong mag-imbestiga. Huwag, huwag kayong mag-imbestiga. Walong bilyon po iyon. Walong bilyon po ibinigay sa isang kumpanya ng startup capital ay 625,000. Startup capital of a company that has questionable credibility and origins. Very, very new, incorporated in, in the Securities and Exchange Commission with a startup capital of 625,000. Ang mga incorporators ay may wanted uh, warrant of arrest sa Taiwan. Pero dito sa Pilipinas, inaawardan ng 8.7 billion na kontrata na pondo ng pandemya. Kaya naman ang mga mahihirap, nagaamot sa isang libong ayuda. Isang libong ayuda, nakikiusap pa. Yung mga frontliners, yung kanilang mga SRA, yung kanilang mga benefits, hinahanapan pa raw ng pondo. Yung mga nagpapakamatay na mga frontliners, mga nurses and doctors na silang nag-aasikaso sa mga namamatay na mga kababayan nating na COVID. Yung kanilang mga uh, yung mga allowances, yung kanilang mga hazard pay, yung kanilang mga food allowances, hanggang ngayon hindi pa rin nabibigay. At ang sabi, hahanapan pa namin ng pondo kung saan nila huhugutan ng pondo. Samantalang walang kahirap-hirap, walong bilyon binigay mo sa mga mafia. Binigay mo sa mga questionable ang karakter. May warrant of arrest pa doon sa Taiwan, pero dito, kinocover up natin, pinagtatanggol. Huwag niyong imbestigahan. Huwag. Patawarin po tayo ng Diyos. But we need to change. At sa buhay po ni Pablo, In, in his suffering, he learned a lot. Amen? Siya po ay uh, nagkaroon ng, ng uh, karanasan. At ang karanasan na yun ay hindi po niya inatrasan. Kaya naman po sabi niya, magagawa ko ang lahat ng bagay. Kung inatrasan po niya itong mga pagsubok na to, hindi po niya masasabing magagawa ko ang lahat ng bagay dahil kay Kristo na suma sa akin. Ano po po yung mga pinagdaanin niya? A night and a day I have been in the deep. A night and a day I have been in the deep. Amen? He was there, floating maybe. He was floating with a piece of debris from the shipwreck. Kasi na-shipwreck siya, so kumuha siguro siya ng isang kahoy at doon lang siya, a night and day. Hindi alam kung meron pang magre-rescue sa kanya, meron bang coast guard, meron bang mag-ano uh, sa kanya. But a night and a day, he was there in the middle of the ocean, clinging for his life. Through dangers, I have been there. Sabi niya ganon, but he was rescued. Praise God. Next, in journeys often, traveling in the days of Paul was very difficult. There was no airplane, there was no train, there was no car. Their journeys were always by walking and walking. And he said, "I was in journeys often." Second Corinthians eleven twenty six. Ministry has brought him in contact with all kinds of people, with all kinds of places. He was traveling, just traveling and traveling. And in his travels, he has faced variety of perils and dangers. Amen? So, parang yung panahon natin ngayon, meron na rin pong mga mandarambong nung unang panahon. Marami na rin pong mga masasamang loob. But then, he was not stopped from traveling in his ministry. 
In perils of water, 2 Corinthians 11, 26, you know, in perils of waters, maybe these are also rivers and streams because, you know, he had experience in the dip of the ocean, but he is also, he has also experienced in perils of waters, maybe yung mga kanilang mga streams and rivers, walang mga, walang mga utulay. Parang ngayon, di ba, marami yung mga doon sa probinsya, sa mga kabundukan. Kapag tumas yung tubig, hindi, walang makakatawid. Pero kapag mababang tubig, doon sila tumatawid sa ilog. Ganun po sa probinsya. Tumatawid sila sa ilog. E, e pag nagmamadali yung bus, kahit na mataas yung ilog, pin, ina, ano, nakakita na kayo ng mga ganun videos. Mataas yung ilog, grabe, ano yung super, ano, super bus. Pero natatawid nila. Sabi ng driver, sanay na ako. I've been doing this for 20 years. 20 years hanggang ngayon, wala pa rin silang tulay. <laughs> Tumanda na si to, tatay na nagdadrive ng bus. Lagi raw niyang tinatawid yung ilog na yun. Kaya kahit nung mataas ang ilog, binaka, ngayon may mga nakaka-video na eh. Na-video nila, oh grabe. Walang bumaba lahat ng mga tao nandun. Ganun yung tiwala nila sa driver nila. Eh, paano kung inanod sila, di ba? Pero tiwala sila sa driver nila kasi bakit? 20 years na raw niya yung tinatawid yung ilog na yon. Pero akong nakita ko, 20 years, ano ginagawa ng mga mayor at politiko dito? Hanggang ngayon, wala pa rin tulay. Tinatawid pa rin nila yung ilog. Walang pondo raw. Hahanapan pa ng pondo. Kawawang Pilipino. Amen. In perils of water. In perils of robbers. 2 Corinthians 11.26 Many areas during that time were also infested with robbers. Marami na pong mga mandarumbong at mga magnanakaw even nung unang panahon. Even when Paul was traveling, he was attacked, he was robbed. You know, he was, uh, he was robbed. Eh, wala namang mararab sa kanya kasi he's a man of God. Wala naman siyang kayamanan. Pero akala siguro, marami siyang pera, marami siyang... Uh, so he was in, in danger, constant danger in other words. He was in perils with robbers. It, Corinthians 11.26, he was in perils of my own countrymen. Ano pong lahi ni, ni Paul? He's a Jew, Right? And uh, being a Jew, dapat magkalahi tayo, wag, wag na tayong magtalo. Pero hindi, tinatalo siya ng mga kapwa niya, Hudyo. In perils of my own countrymen. And in most cases, these were the Jews who opposed Paul because suddenly he became a follower of the way of Jesus Christ. Nagalit na galit ang mga pariseyo because Jesus Christ was breaking down walls of religion, breaking down walls of religiosity and fanaticism and wrong doctrine and wrong catechism and wrong beliefs. He was breaking down and Paul followed in that. Jesus went to heaven and Paul continued that ministry. And so, Paul himself was not spared from the persecution by his own countrymen, by his own people. Amen? He was persecuted. And in these last days, you know, nations will rise in uproar. Look at America. America, sila sila, mga Amerikano, magkakaiba sila ng mga posisyon, magkakaiba sila ng mga paniniwala. Sila sila mismo, nag-aaway. Amen? Yung mga mga pro-vaccine nandito sa kabila, yung mga anti-vaccine nandito sa kabila, nagpang-abot talaga sila physically. Ganun sila ka-passionate. Yung mga uh, pro-mask, yung mga kailangan mag-wear ng mask nandito sa kabila. Yung mga anti-mask nandito sa kabila. Nag-aaway-away sila. Sabi ng governor ng Florida, may ban ng mask mandate. No, don't let the children go to school with mask on. Sabi ng governor ng Texas, sabi ng governor ng Alabama, mostly uh, southern states. They don't want to let their children wear masks when they go back to school. And then, ito namang mga parents, uh, mga, ano, uh, mga school superintendents, 
No, you have to let the children come to school with mask. Kasi yung kanilang uh, staff ay nai-infect. Yung mga bata, malalakas yan siguro. Kahit na, ano, hindi sila tinatablan, di ba? Pero yung mga matatanda, nahawa. Kagaya do, may security guard sila, matanda na, 60 years old, 50 years old, namatay. Sapagkat uh, pumasok yung mga bata nung first week of school year nila, Without mask on, and and no, now um, thousands of students are in quarantine. What am I saying? That in the last days you will be persecuted by your own people, by your own countrymen, because you have different beliefs, you have different position, you have different political stand. And and Paul has separated from the old ways, and he has followed the way, the the teachings of Jesus Christ. And because of that, he was persecuted. You know, when you preach something that is right, when you preach something that is uh, true, amen, you will suffer persecution. You will suffer division. And uh, be ready for that. But, you know, you stand with what is right. In perils of the Gentiles, okay? So aside from his countrymen, his own countrymen, his own people, He was also in peril or in danger facing the Gentiles. These are the non-Jews. Sila po yung mga hindi mga uh, Hudyo. They are the Gentiles. So, of course, the Gentiles are generally stirred up against Paul because he was preaching also against their idolatry, against their superstitious beliefs, against their worldly uh, uh, ways. So, nastir up ang mga Gentiles. Galit din sila kay Paul. So, galit yung mga Hudyo sa kanya. Galit din yung mga hintil sa kanya. Wala kang pupuntahan. In perils in the city, 2 Corinthians 11.26, in the city, he was in danger. In perils in the wilderness, amen? Even when he was uh, traveling through wastelands, you know, in the mountains, because, you know, if you go to the Holy Land, talaga pong mountainous siya, very, uh, magtetrek ka sa mga mountains and It, you know, you go through all, na, na imagine ko, when Jesus Christ was walking on these mountains with the, you know, weather na siguro may mga pagkakataong sobrang init or taglamig naman, sobrang lamig or umuulan. And uh, on top of that, wild beast, you know, you encounter wild beast along the way. And on top of that, walang mga restaurant noong unang panahon. Hunger and want while traveling. Shelter. Where do you where do you go shelter? Puro mga bato bato, you know. You just find shelter in in those rocks. In other words, those are really uh, uh, perilous or dangerous situations in the wilderness. Next, eleven twenty six in perils of the sea, as we have already uh, discussed uh, beforehand. In perils among false brethren, so false. Witnesses, mismong brethren mo could, you know, betray you. Mismong brethren you could be treacherous. Sila mismo ay uh, ibebetray ka. And, and that would be the most uh, hurt, hurting thing. You know, yung betrayal of, of your own brethren. That hurts. Okay? Di bali nga raw sabi nila, ikaw ay mabetray ng uh, Kalaba, yung ka enemy mo, it, it won't hurt you so much. But when you are betrayed with a friend, by your own friend, that is the most uh, painful thing. Just like Jesus Christ, he was betrayed by Judas Iscariot. And Judas was his apostle, was his disciple. He was within the twelve. Kasama si Judas sa labindalawang alagad. But he was bet he betrayed Jesus Christ. And... Uh, Paul was no exemption. He suffered betrayal as well from his own brethren, you know. So, in perils among false brethren. In weariness and toil, 11.27. Weariness and toil means exhaustion, pagkapagod, okay, burned out, exhaustion. So, hindi lang ikaw ang napapagod. Amen? Hard work produces weariness. If you work hard, 
it results to weariness. Nakpapagod ka rin. At minsan sabi mo, Lord, pagod na ako. <laughs> pwede bang ano? Pwede bang magpahinga or pwede bang uh, tama na? But Paul went through the same thing. He was weary. He was uh, exhausted. He was very tired. In sleeplessness often, 11.27, Paul experienced many sleepless nights, many sleepless nights, especially maybe in the prison. How can you, how can you sleep well, you know, in such a situation? But in all his sleepless nights, you know, he continued on like preaching and, and teaching and writing, you know. Pag hindi siya nakatulog, magsulat na lang ako. Pag hindi siya makatulog, umawit na lang ako. They were worshiping in the in the prison. They they worship in the prison. Hindi ako makatulog, magpray na lang ako. Hindi ako makatulog, magmeditate na lang ako. He used every opportunity. Paul used every opportunity to let his relationship with Christ grow. In hunger and thirst, 11:27. In hunger and thirst. Okay, so nagutom nag, at uh, lack of food. Yes, lack of necessary food. He experienced hunger and thirst on a number of occasions. Lack of money at times to buy food. Okay, kaya wala siyang pagkain kasi wala siyang pera. Pambili ng pagkain. And uh, all of this he experienced. Amen? So we are not, hindi po tayo naiiba. We are not special. If we are suffering, if we are experiencing hunger, thirst, tired, being tired and exhausted and being sleepless, oftentimes in dangers and in peril, we are not special. Naranasan na ni Paul. That's why he's saying, yes, continue to experience that so that in the end, you can say Philippians 4.13. You can do all things through Christ. Turo po natin in fasting. Okay, walang katapusan. Ang dami niyang naranasan. Ilan na yan? 20? 22? 22 pa lang, ha? In fastings often, okay? So, forced fasting, abstinence from food, maybe, or talagang he is declaring it as a fast because, you know, the more you suffer, sa halip na mag-complain ka, mag-pray ka, mag-fast ka. Amen? Para yung laman mo na umiigkas ay mamatay. Fasting kills your flesh. Fasting will let your flesh die. Because in fasting, you are abstaining from food. What is the, the food of your body? Yung kinakain mo, yung laman mo, ang pagkain niyan ay uh, adobo o, o masarap na mga pagkain na kinakain mo. If you abstain from food, your flesh becomes weak, but your spirit becomes strong. So when you are fasting, you are killing your flesh and making your spirit strong. And Paul did that. He fasted often. He fasted often. He abstained from food. In cold and nakedness, number 23, in cold and nakedness, 2 Corinthians 11, 27. Nakedness, naranasan niya. Sobrang uh, wala, siyang, wala siyang jacket. Amen? Tayo, ang, ang gaganda ng mga jacket natin, di ba? Puro mga branded. Panahon ni Paul, he was in cold and nakedness because he had no nothing to cloth himself para siya po ay, uh, to clad himself para siya po ay maprotect from cold. He didn't have that. Wala siyang Wala siyang luxury, luxurious uh, jacket na, na, amen, ngayon, ang, ang gaganda ng mga damit natin, di ba? Pag nagmi-mission tayo, kompleto tayo. So, we look so good and we look so handsome or pretty. But in the time of Paul, he experienced cold and nakedness. Why did he feel cold and naked? Because maybe he didn't have any shelter. Walang hotel. Amen? Walang hotel na tutuluyan. So maybe he was just, you know, letting time pass by sa, isa, sa isang uh, kweba o na walang uh, ventilation, walang air conditioner or walang heater pag sobrang lamig. 
Pero ngayon, all of the conveniences in life we are experiencing. But we have the nerve to complain and say, Lord, bakit ganito? Bakit hindi mainit? Bakit hindi malamig? Bakit ito lang ang damit ko? Bakit ito lang ang pagkain ko? Bakit ito lang? Bakit ito lang? We have all the nerve to complain whereas Paul he experienced cold and nakedness. He had no money to maybe, you know, rent a, a, a house para, siya, para niya tuluyan or an inn. I mean, he, he had nothing. So sabi nga niya, from his prison cell in Roman, sabi niya, sinulatan niya si Timothy. Paul penned these words to Timothy. Bring the cloak that I left with Carpus at Troas when you come. And the books, especially the parchments, do your utmost to come before winter. 2 Timothy 4:13 to 21. Binibili niya, pwede ba dali mo rito yung makapal na cloak, makapal na jacket ko? Pwede ba dali mo bago dumating ang taglamig? Binibilinan po niya si Timothy. Why? Because he experienced frequent cold and nakedness. Nakedness, hindi naman ibig sabihin na wala siyang damit, pero kulang siya sa damit. Kaya siya nilalamig. Hindi makapal yung kanyang damit, kaya siya nilalamig. Amen? Pero ngayon, ang gaganda, ang gagara ng mga damit natin, lalo na ng mga man of God. Amen? Praise God sapagkat, tayo, ibig sabihin, blessed tayo. Pero pag dumating sa want and need ng buhay, pwede ba wag kang magreklamo? Kasi pinaranas ng Diyos sa'yo kung paano ka damitan, kung paano ka isustain, sustentuhan sa lahat ng mga gusto mo. All right. Beside the other things that comes upon me daily, my deep concern for all the churches. Yun yung pinaka-matindi. Sa lahat ng punong mga pinagdaanan niya personal. Okay? Those the things that I enumerated. Sabi niya, itong pinaka-matindi. Besides all those other things, what comes upon me daily is my deep concern for all the churches. Hindi niya inisip yung kanyang sarili, yung kanya pa rin concern sa mga iglesia. That is how a true man of God should be. His bodily afflictions, he did not mind. His own personal sufferings, he did not mind. He said, what bothers me daily is my deep concern for all the churches. 2 Corinthians 11:28. And in his writings, you can feel that. You know, you, you can feel that constant concern and prayer for those to whom he was writing. His anxiety was for the churches, not for himself. His anxiety and worry was for the churches. Kung sila ba ay gumagawa ng tama, mabuti sa kanilang mga buhay. Yung mga taga-Korinto, binibigyan niya ng instruction. He was giving instructions to the uh, people in Corinth because they are having, you know, bickerings and fightings. So he was giving them instructions. So this sufferings that Paul went through, just 24 in 2 Corinthians 11, marami pa doon sa recorded sa Book of Acts, pero that will take another sermon. Ang dami po niyang mga pinagdaanan, he suffered, but in all of this, he said, I take pleasure in my infirmities, in my reproaches, in my needs, in my persecutions, in my distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. 2 Corinthians 12.10 Amen? And so, kung, bab- kung baba- babalikan po natin yung ating uh, text today, which was taken from Philippians 4.11, Paul is saying, in all of this, I have learned. I have learned. Learning is a process. Learning is something that Paul went through. And that learning is, the, yung, yung learning po na yun ay yung giving his total dependence and reliance on Christ. That is why when he said, I have learned to be content in whatever state I am. In 13, he said, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. 
Paul showed that it is possible to say, I'm okay and I'm content, even if you are lacking, even if you are in need, even if you are problem, you know, full of problems, even if you are in a situation that is not so good like in a prison cell. Paul showed that it is possible to be content in good or in bad, in plenty and in luck. It is possible to be content. Why? Because contentment should not be based in material things, in people, in places, in food, in position, in clothing, in cars, in house and lot, in bank accounts. Contentment should not be based in power or in wealth or in your position, in your fame. Contentment should be based in our relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. And so if you are watching right now and you seem to be discontented, you are not happy, you are not okay, you are not at peace, you are always worrying, and it, you cannot say that you are content. Why? Because you don't have a right relationship with Jesus Christ. Once you have a right relationship with Jesus Christ, you can say like Paul, I am content in whatever state I am. Because your contentment is not based on your achievements, on your goals, on your money, on your position, on your wealth. But your contentment will be based on someone who is constant in your life, who promised I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. And that is Jesus Christ. And so today, as the world is so discontented, there's a uproar in, every, in everything. We are not contented with the government. We are not contented with our lives. We are not contented. We are restless. We are angry. We are mad. The world is so mad right, right now. Because of so many things that are happening, people are full of complaining and grumbling and wallowing. Even in the wealthiest of countries, kahit po doon sa mga mayayamang mga bansa, sila po ay uh, hindi kontento, sila po ay nag-aalsa, sila po ay uh, hindi kontento sa kanilang gobyerno, sa kanilang sistema. Maraming pa bagay na nagiging dahilan ng kanilang mga reklamo. But I'm sorry to say this, that this greatest discontentment is manifest because we have no relationship with Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the secret to contentment. If you put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, you can say like Paul, I am content with whatever state I am, whether in plenty or abundance or in luck, or in need. Because I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. And today, God is telling you, put your trust in me. Ipagkatiwala mo ang buhay mo sa akin. Pagod ka na ba sa paglaban sa buhay? Pagod ka na ba sa pakikipagbaka? Are you tired of uh, you know doing it by your own, but you have never succeeded or you never succeed, if you are tired and exhausted because you are suffering, you are going through overwhelming problems or circumstances in your life, and you are so discontented, and this discontentment breeds resentment, you know? You, have, you are full of resentment. You are full of pain. You are full of uh, misery and complaining and grumbling. And so you are full of ungratefulness because you are not contented with your life. And all of these are negative feelings and they are sin. You know, to, to be ungrateful, to be resentful, to be uh, complaining and grumbling, these are all sin. And you have to, you know, surrender that because sin separates you from God. Sin separates us from God. Sa halip na tayo mapagpasalamat, sa halip na tayo ay uh, magpasalamat sa Panginoon, ano man ang ating pinagdadaanan, tayo po ay nagre-reklamo, tayo po ay nagagalit, tayo po ay hindi kontento. At sa araw at oras na to, tayo po ay uh, iayos po natin ang ating mga puso. 
Let us fix our hearts. Let us repent of our sins of ungratefulness and complaining and grumbling and resentment. And let us surrender our lives to Jesus. Because only then, when we surrender our lives to Jesus and completely rely and depend on Him, in whatever situation we are in, just like Paul, we can say, we are content. We are okay. Kaya tayo pong lahat ay yumukho at pumikit. At itaas po natin ang ating dalawang kamay, patuho ng langit. At atin pong pagsisihan ang ating mga resentment and bitterness sa ating mga buhay, ang ating galit poot sa manang loob hinanakit. Sa mga nararanasan natin, we have not been contented. We were discontented and so it bred resentment and bitterness and anger in our hearts. And so today, let us ask for the forgiveness of God. We have been ungrateful to God. We have been complaining to God. We can never learn to be content unless we surrender our lives to God. And so today, let us surrender our lives to Jesus. Let us say, Jesus, forgive me for my sins. Forgive me for my discontentment, for my anger, my bitterness, my hatred. Forgive me for my worrying. Forgive me for not trusting you and depending on you. Forgive me for relying on my own strength. Forgive me for everything that I did that did not please you. Sorry, Lord. Cleanse me. Patawarin mo ako sapagkat ako'y punong-puno ng reklamo, kawalan ng pananampalataya at pagtitiwala. Patawarin mo ako kung hindi ako nakukontento. Gusto ko pa ng mas marami. Gusto ko pa ng mas malaki. Gusto ko pa ng, ng lahat ng bagay. At hindi po ako nakukontento. Ayoko pong mag-suffer. Nagagalit ako sa konting bagay. Patawarin mo ako, Panginoon. Come on, you know the source of your resentment. You know the source of your bitterness, naiinggit ka sapagkat hindi ka kasing successful nila, ikaw ay nagtatampu sa Diyos sapagkat wala ka nito at wala ka nun, patawarin ka ng Panginoon at humingi ka ng tawad ngayon. Great is the measure of our Father's love. Think about His love. Think about His love. Think about His goodness. Think about His grace that brought us through. For as high as the heavens above, so of our Father's love. Great is the measure of our Father's love. Hinanap mo ang kaligayahan sa tao. Hinanap mo ang kaligayahan sa drugs, marijuana, sa sex, sa pita ng laman, sa gawa ng laman. Nag-boyfriend ka ng marami, nag-girlfriend ka ng marami. Nakipag-involve ka sa mga maling relasyon. Sapagkat hinahanap mo ang kapayapaan, hinahanap mo ang katuna ang kaligayahan. Ngunit wala dito ang kaligayahan. Wala dito ang kapayapaan. Wala dito ang kakontentuhan. You might try all the world's offerings like sex and drugs and marijuana and gambling and money and everything that the world can offer but this will never satisfy you this will never satisfy you and give you contentment because only Jesus can give you satisfaction only Jesus can satisfy your needs 
Only Jesus can satisfy. For as high as the heavens above, so great is the measure of our Father's love. Great is the measure of our Father's love. Even when I strayed away, Sabihin mo, Panginoon, hinihingi ko ng tawad ang lahat ng bagay na ginawa ko, inisip ko, na hindi nakalugod sa iyong harapan. Pinubuksan ko ang puso ko at tinatanggap kita bilang Panginoon, Diyos at tagapagligtas ng aking buhay. Patawarin mo ako at linisin sapagkat ako ay na-involved sa sex na hindi dapat. Patawarin mo ako at linisin sapagkat ako ay nag-take ng drugs, ng marihuana, ng mga bagay na pita ng laman. Patawarin mo ako, Panginoon. At sa oras na to, tinatanggap ko ang kalinisan ng dugo ng Panginoong Heso Kristo sa aking buhay. Ibangon mo ako, linisin mo ako, patawarin mo ako. At bigyan mo ako ng bagong simula. Tulungan mo ako na hindi na maging reklamador. Tulungan mo ako na maging malakas, matatag sa gitna ng problema at pagsubok ng buhay. Huwag kumatras. Huwag bumigay. Pagkos kagaya ni Pablo, sabihin ko, okay ako. Kahit mabigat ang laban. Okay ako. Kahit malaki ang pangangailangan. Okay ako. Kahit na mahirap ang buhay. Okay ako sapagkat si Kristo ang aking nag, nagpapalakas sa akin. Think about His love. Think about His love. Hallelujah, Lord. Think about His goodness. Tanggapin mo ang pag-ibig ng Diyos. Tanggapin mo ang kalakasan ng Diyos. Tanggapin mo ang biyaya ng Diyos. Pagod ka na ba? Malapit ka na bang sumuko? Punong-puno ka ba ng pag-aalala? Punong-puno ka ba ng pangangailangan? Punong-puno ka ba ng pagdududa? Tanggapin mo ang pag-ibig ng Diyos. Tanggapin mo ang presensya ng Diyos. Tanggapin mo ang kalakasan ng Diyos. Tanggapin mo ang himala ng Diyos. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Kumikilos ang Diyos sa buhay mo ngayon. Pinapalakas ka. Pinupuno ka. Pinapahiran ka ng kanyang kapangyarihan. Tanggapin mo ang Himala. Dumadaloy ang Himala. Ano mang Himala ang kailangan mo? Himala sa katawan. Himala sa kaisipan. Himala sa pinansyal. Whatever miracle you need from God today, as you have surrendered your life to Jesus, He is able and willing to meet all your needs according to His riches in glory. And if you are suffering from an overwhelming situation in your life, the Lord is just moving mightily. Yes, receive your miracle. Supernatural strength. 
supernatural wisdom, supernatural ability, healings and miracles receive in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He satisfies. He satisfies. from him right now yes he satisfies every desire of your heart to satisfy every need that you have so whatever it is be ready to receive God is just touching you and healing you from your pain from your misery God is setting you free from your anxiety and worry God is setting you free from your sin sin of immorality and sin of lust of the eye and lust of the flesh the Lord is saying, my child, I am the only one who can satisfy you. No relationship, no man or woman can satisfy you. I can only satisfy you, saith the Lord. And so commit your life to me. Give yourself to me, saith God. Surrender yourself to me. And I will satisfy you all your needs emotional needs mental needs financial needs physical needs and spiritual needs whatever needs you have from God you need from God just receive it now in Jesus name He is satisfying your soul He is satisfying your spirit He is satisfying your mind He is satisfying your body healing you, touching you, creating a miracle in you. Just receive in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Yes, Lord. Let your healing flow from the top of your head to the soles of His feet. The power of God is just flowing. The healing touch of God is just flowing. Just receive it now in Jesus' name. Yes, O oh God. Abutin mo, Panginoon, ang mga nangangailangan ngayon. Nasa banig ng karamdaman. Nasa bingit ng kamatayan. In their hospital beds. Father, in the name of Jesus, just touch them. And heal them, O God. In Jesus' mighty name. And Lord, those who have great financial needs because they lost their jobs, their businesses went bankrupt, and they have nowhere to turn to. God, meet their needs financially in the name of Jesus. Create a miracle, O God, that you open the doors of opportunities. Ibigay mo, Panginoon, at ibalik ang kanilang mga negosyo. Ibalik mo ang kanilang mga trabaho ng higit pa sa kanilang inaasahan. Sa pangalan ni Jesus. Ano man ang pangangailangan mo, Ito man ay katalinuhan, kaalaman, abilidad. 
Ito man ay pang tuition, ito man ay kagalingan, himala. Whatever it is that you need from God, God can satisfy you. Just receive in the name of Jesus Christ. God has given you supernatural physical strength that you are healed from your sickness and disease. Today, God has given you emotional stability that you will never worry again. Today, God has given you satisfying your flesh so that you will never seek pleasure from wrong relationships. And God is just making you holy in His sight, cleansing you from all immorality, from all sins and transgressions. Just receive the holiness and restoration of God in the name of Jesus. And whatever it is that you need from God, yes, God is able to do it. Just receive it now in Jesus' name. Even broken relationships, God can heal. God can restore. Just receive it in Jesus' mighty name. The Son of the living God. The pain from a broken dream, unfulfilled desires, the Lord is just healing you. Just touching you. Hindi na tupad ang pangarap mo. Hindi na tupad ang nais mo. At ikaw ay merong bitterness at resentment. Bakit hindi nangyari at hindi naganap? Ito sabi sa'yo ng Panginoon, Anak, ihanda mo ang sarili mo. Sabagat dakilang bagay ang gagawin ko sa'yo. I will do great and mighty things. Greater things saith God. Do not wallow in pain and resentment and bitterness. Here am I, saith God. I will do great and mighty things in your life. Get ready, saith the Lord. Forget the past, for I am doing a new thing. I will restore you. I will promote you. I will do great and mighty things in you, saith God, for I have chosen you. And my chosen and my calling has never changed. It is unchanging, saith the Lord. And I promise not to leave you. I promise not to forsake you. I will fulfill what I have promised to you, saith God. For I who began a good work in you shall finish it to the end. Hallelujah. And so receive the supernatural strength of God. Do not give up. The Lord is strengthening you. The Lord is just restoring you and pouring out His grace upon you. Just receive the fresh anointing of God in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Yes, your weary soul. Ikaw na napapagod. Ikaw na malapit ng sumuko. Tanggapin mo ang kalakasan ng Diyos. Pinapalakas ka ng Diyos. Tanggapin mo sa pangalan ni Jesus. That fills me up inside It is your grace
Jesus alone, once again I repeat, it is Jesus Christ alone who can satisfy the longings of your heart. Huwag mong hanapin ang kaligayahan sa tao, sa pera, sa posisyon, sa anumang bagay na binibigay ng mundo, sapagkat si Jesus lamang ang makakatugon dito. Kaya naman sa oras at araw na ito, i-recommit mo ang buhay mo kay Kristo. You surrender your life to Jesus once again and commit your life to Him because it is He alone who can satisfy the longings of your heart. And then you can say, I am content in whatever state I am. I am happy, Lord. I am okay. Even if the circumstances are not okay. Because my total dependence and reliance is on you, Lord Jesus. And so thank you. We will not be shaken. We will not back down. We will not give up. We will continue on even if the difficult circumstances are facing us. We will not surrender because we depend on you alone, Jesus. And so today, Lord, we recommit our lives to you. We surrender our lives to you. And until you come again, we will be faithful in following you. Jesus, you alone can fill me up. And I would gain Jesus, there's nothing in this world that can satisfy us. Truly, it is Jesus alone. And thank you, Lord, for renewing that zeal in our hearts. Thank you, Lord, for reminding us that it is only Jesus alone that we need in this life. And so we will continue to totally rely on you, depend on you, whatever circumstances, whatever state we are in. We will say like Paul, I am content, I am happy, I am at peace, I am okay in whatever state I am. For I can do all things through Jesus Christ who gave me strength.
Thank you, Lord. Amen? Palakpakan po natin ang ating Panginoon sa napakagandang mensahe na ating narinig. Amen po ba? At tayo po ay dadako na sa ating pagbibigay. Amen? Ang mga nagbibigay daw po, sabi ng ating banal na kasulatan, ay ang matatalinong tao. Amen? Amen! Sapagkat ang mga pantas na sumamba kay Jesus, sila ay nagdala na kanilang handog. Amen po? Kayamanan. Amen po ba? Ginto, pilak at mira ang kanilang handog. Amen at sa oras na ito tayo po ay magbibigay ng ating tithes and offering. Ang sabi ng Ang sabi po ng Malakay Sorry. Malakay 6 uh, 36. Amen po ba? I the Lord change not. So, dun pa lang alam na natin na ang Diyos natin ay hindi nagbabago. Amen po. So, ang kanyang mga salita ay totoo at tapat sa ating mga buhay. Amen po ba? Amen po ba? Amen. Amen. At ang sabi ng Malakay, hindi na, po ba, hindi na po bago sa atin to. Sabi ng Malakay 3.8, ako si... Amen. Sorry, sorry. Malakay 3.6, ako si Yahweh at hindi ako nagbabago. Amen po ba? At... Ang kasunod po, at uh, tumalun tayo sa verse 8, ang tanong ko'y, tama, tama ba? Ang tanong ko na may matuwid bang dayain ng tao? Ang Diyos? Hindi. Ngunit dinadaya ninyo ako. Sa, paanong, sa paanong paraan sa mga ikapo at mga handog? Isinumpa ko kayong lahat sapagkat ako'y dinadaya ng buong bansa. Amen. Verse 10, ibigay ninyo buong-buo ang inyong mga ikapo upang matugunan ang pangangailangan ng aking templo. Subukin ninyong gawin ito. Kung hindi ko buksan ang mga durungawa ng langit at ibuhos sa inyo ang masaganang pagpapala, hindi ko padadalhan ng salot ang inyong lupain kaya't mamumunga ng sagana ang inyong mga ubasan. Sa gayon, sasabihin ng lahat ng bansa na kayo'y mapalad sapagat napakainam terhan ng lupaing ninyo. Amen po ba? So parang paulit-ulit lang ang ating verse na ginagamit. Amen po ba? Pero patuloy pong uh, nagpapaalala ito sa bawat isa sa atin. Amen po ba? Anong panahon natin ngayon? Nag-ECQ na naman. At MECQ na naman, hindi natin alam ang kasunod nito. Amen. Pero ang prophecy ng lingkod ng Diyos, during this time, during po ng ating uh, pandemic crisis, tayo po ay pagpapalain ng Diyos. Naniniwala po ba kayo doon? Amen. So pagkat tayo mismo, hindi natin maikakaila ito. Amen po ba? Ako, ako hindi po ako natutuwa kasi may covid Alam nyo po, masaya lang talaga ako. Kasi iba yung feelings ko ngayon kasi hindi ako sobrang pagod. <laughs> Ang sarap ng buhay ko sa kabilang banda, parang sabi ko nga, okay ako. Di ba? I, le- I learned to be content. Tama-tama ang ating mensahe sa hapon na to. Natuto tayong makontento kasi may Diyos tayo na hindi nagbabago. Hindi tayo binibigo. Amen? Masaya tayo kahit pandemic ngayon, tumaan niya ang ECQ, amen po ba? Pero talagang masaya talaga ako kasi uh, talagang ramdam na ramdam ko na ang Lord hindi nagpabaya sa pamilya ko. Sa buhay ko, hindi kami nagkakasak- nagkakasakit. Praise God, kahit ang mga kapitbahay may COVID sa banda ron, Praise God, balot tayo ng dugo ni Kristo. Amen po kasi tayo pong mga taga KOJF, ay sumusunod sa Malakay 3:6 to 12. Amen. Kilala natin, kilala natin ang Diyos natin at tayo ay nagbibigay ng ating mga ikapo at handog. Maliwanag na maliwanag ito sa panahong ito na tayo umaani. Amen po ba? Ngayon natin nararamdaman yung mga pagpapala eh. eh sabi ko nga hindi naman ako pro COVID eh. Kaso lang masaya ako, natuwa ako sapagkat mas maganda ang pakiramdam ko ngayon. Hindi ako sobrang busy at hindi ako nag-aalala na marami akong gagawin. Amen. 
Pero kompleto ang biyaya ng Lord. Eh. Yung pagpapala niya, yung kung anong meron ako ngayon, dati, parang, parang pareha lang, pareho lang. Amen po, eh, may pandemya ngayon, kukunti ang customer, pero God always made a way. Di ba ba, laging ang Diyos ay gumagawa ng kaparaanan sa atin sapagkat tayong mga taga KOJF ay marunong tumupad sa Malachi 3.8 to 12. Amen po, maliwanag, sabi ng Isaiah 3.10. Sabihin ninyo sa taong matuwid, mapalad ka, pakikinabangan mo ang inyong pinagpaguran. Amen? So, kung tayo ay nagtanim na, Meron na tayo nga anihin. So, nagbigay na tayo. So, ibibless na lang tayo ng Lord. Aanihin na lang natin ang mga para sa atin ng mga pangako ng Diyos. Amen? Ang sabi ng Isaiah 3.11 At sa masamang tao, kawawa ka. Sasapitin mo'y kapahamakan. Kung ano ang iyong itinanim, siya mo rin aanihin. So, amen po ba? Ganun pa rin. Kung ano ang itinanim mo, yun ang aanihin mo. Magbigay ka at ikaw ay bibigyan ng Diyos. Amen? Huston takal, siksikliglig at umaapay. Umaapaw, Lucas 6.38. Amen po ba? At napakaganda ng mga pangangaral. Nakakabless po ang mga tinatanggap nating aral during pandemic. Nakakatuwa kasi halos araw-araw pwede nating marinig ang mga aral ng mga lingkod ng Diyos. Amen po? Parang bakit, bakit pa ako makikinig ng iba? Amen? Kung meron naman akong mas mainam na pakikinggan sa bawat oras. Amen po, kahit pa ulit-ulitin natin yung ating mga videos, nasa YouTube, nasa Facebook. Amen? Nakakatuwa. Ano ang sabi ng 1 Corinthians 9.23? Ginagawa ko ang lahat ng ito alang-alang sa mabuting balita upang makabahagi ako sa mga pagpapala nito. Amen? Unang dahilan, bakit po tayo ay nagbibigay ng ikaw po at handog para sa kanyang templo. Amen? Para rin po ito makapagligtas ng maraming kaluluwa. Amen po? Eh yung ating ibinibigay na maging kabahagi tayo. Amen po ba? Sa pagpapalaganap ng mga salita ng Diyos. Meron po tayong radio, TV, ministry. Amen po? At nakakatuwa kasi tumatanggap talaga tayo ng blessings eh, na hindi natin inaasahan. Kasi sa, sa mga simpleng pagbabahagi natin ng ating mga ng salita ng Diyos, tayo ay napapagpala. Amen? So, yung po mga dahilan kung bakit patuloy dapat tayong nagbibigay ng ikapo at handog. Ano ang sabi ng... Amen po ba? Ang dami eh. Ang, ano ang sabi ng Oseas? Yung, sabi, yung ipinangaral ng lingkod ng Diyos na Oseas... 10.12 10.12 Maghasi kayo ng katuwiran at mag-aani kayo ng pagpapala bunga ng katapatan ninyo sa akin. Bungkalin ninyo uli ang pa- pinabaya ang lupa sapagkat panahon na upang hanapin si Yahweh, lalapit siya sa inyo at pauulanan kayo ng mga biyaya. Amen. It's about time. To give our tithes and offering. Kung hindi pa po tayo nagbibigay, kayo po mga nakikinig at nanonood. Totoo po ito, hindi po ito kathang isip. Ito po ay salita ng Diyos na ibinabahagi namin sa inyo. Kaya kayo po ay magbigay ng tithes and offering, first fruits, pledges, kung ano mang hinihingi ng Lord sa inyo. Hindi po humihingi ang Lord ng wala sa atin. Kung ano po ang meron sa atin na hinihingi ng Lord, ibigay po natin ito. At sabi, di ba, pauulanan tayo ng mga biyaya. Amen? Ano ba yung ula? Napakarami nun. Amen? So yun yung biyaya ng Diyos sa atin. Pero ang sabi niya, maghasig kayo ng katuwiran. Amen? So yung matuwid, yung, yung kalooban ng Lord ang ating gagawin. Kung anong ipinapagawa sa atin ng Lord, yun ang ating gagawin. At maging tapat tayo sa Kanya. Amen po ba? Napakaganda ng mga aral ng, ng ating mga lingkod ng Diyos sa bawat pagharap sa ating lahat. Amen? Sa bawat pangangaral nila sa atin, talagang na, na, nabibless tayo. Amen po? At parang gusto mo rin siyang ba- basahin lahat at ishare lahat. Amen po ba? Sapagkat ito'y tunay at totoo na mapapangahawakan ng ating mga buhay. Sabi ko nga, I'm ano, content contento tayo. Amen po ba? Kahit pandemic ngayon. Kasi ang Diyos, ibinigay sa atin lahat ng ating needs eh. 
Amen po. Protektado tayo. Wala tayong mga sakit. Sa kabilang banda, marami tayong blessings. Amen? Parang sa totoo lang po talaga, masasabi ko, hindi naman talaga gusto ko yung COVID, pero gusto ko yung aking pakiramdam, yung panahon ko ngayon. <laughs> Sorry, pero talaga hindi po yung COVID ang gusto ko. Gusto ko lang po talaga yung, uh, yung pakiramdam ko ngayon na uh, medyo talagang uh, relax. <laughs> Amen? Parang... Oh, at ease, hindi masyadong busy. Pero ang biyaya nandyan, ganun pa rin, dumadaloy. Sapagkat napakabuti ng ating Panginoon. Amen? Lahat magagawa natin, we can, we can do all this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen po? At lahat ay bibigay sa atin ng ating pangangailangan through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen? So, ano pang, ano pang ating... Uh, dahilan para hindi makapagbigay. Amen po ba? Gayong napakabuti ng Diyos sa ating mga buhay. At isa pa, bukod sa ating tithes and offering, ating pledges, ang ating um, uh, pagsuporta, ay huwag po natin kakalimutan ang ating mga man of God, ang ating mga lingkod ng Diyos. Amen? Napakabuti ng Diyos sapagat meron silang sinugo, mga taong inatasan ng Diyos na turuan tayo Katulad nga ng pagbibigay na ganito, amen? Sabi nga sa Philippians, di po ba? Hindi naman hangad nila. Hindi hangad ng mga tagapagturo na sila'y tumanggap. Mas hangad nila na tayo'y mapagpala. Kasi kapag tayo napagpala, mamahalin lalo natin sila at ibibigay natin ang mga blessings natin sa kanila. Amen po? So, sa, sa kabilang banda, sa pagbibigay natin, tithes and offering, kasama, isama po natin, ang mga lingkod ng Diyos at ang kanyang pamilya. Prayer and fasting, napakabuti po niyan. Lalo na kung sasamahan natin ng ating mga financial support o kung ano man ang mga blessings pa natin. Ibigay, isuporta po natin sa ating mga lingkod ng Diyos. Amen? Amen. At hindi na po mahirap magpadala ngayon mga kapatid, yung pong hindi nakakadalo dyan. Huwag nyo naman pong i-withhold yung inyong tithes and offering. Napakadali pong ipadala through Jesus. Through Gcash. Amen? Through Jesus. Si, si Jesus. Amen? At through bank. Amen po ba? Nandiyan naman ang mga banko, bukas pa yan eh. So, mad, uh, pero ang Gcash, kahit hindi ka pumunta sa banko at pumila ng mahaba, napakabilis. Amen? Maglagay lang kayo ng app ng Gcash sa inyong mga cellphone at magpa-load kayo doon. Amen? May, madali nyo na po matatransfer sa church na ito. Amen? Meron po tayo kung mapapansin niyo po sa ating captions sa uh, sa Facebook account ng ng KOJF nandiyan po ang mga contact numbers. Amen. Kung ano yung mga GCash number, cellphone number, amen po. So, wag po nating withhold yan. Ibigay po nating lahat ang hinihingi ng Lord sa atin. Amen. At tayo nga po ay magbigay. Amen. Magbigay tayo ng the best para sa Lord. Magbigay tayo ng may buong galak sa puso at masaya. Amen po, ating pong ipanalangin ng ating mga ika po at handog. Dakilan Diyos, maraming maraming salamat. Maraming salamat po, Panginoon, sa kabutihan mo. Patuloy mo, Lord, kaming tinuturuan upang maging tapat sa iyo, Panginoon. Upang, Lord, ikaw ay aming unahin, Panginoon, sa aming mga buhay. Maraming maraming salamat, Panginoon, dahil tunay o Diyos, pinamamalas mo sa amin, ipinararamdam mo sa amin, Panginoon, ng iyong mga biyaya. Ibinibigay mo sa amin ang lahat ng iyong mga, ang lahat ng aming mga pangangailangan, Panginoon. At patuloy nga, Lord, dalangin ko lahat ng nakarinig ng, ng mga mensahe mo, Panginoon, ay maging kabahagi, Panginoon, ng iglesia ito. Sila rin, Panginoon, ay magbigay ng kanilang tithes and offering. Paniwalaan nila, Panginoon, ang malakay, 3A to 12, Panginoon, sapagkat sa iyo, Panginoon, nagagaling ang, ang proteksyon, ang mainam na proteksyon, Panginoon, para sa aming lahat. At ikaw rin, Panginoon, na magpuprovide, Panginoon, pagpapalain mo kami, dakilan Diyos. Kaya nga po, Lord, dalangin ko po, Panginoon, ang lahat ng nakikinig at nanonood ay maging kabahagi na ng iglesyang ito. Magpatuloy, Panginoon, na nakikinig at nanonood at magpatuloy na magtiwala sa Lord na ibigay ang kanilang mga ikapo at handog. Maraming maraming salamat o Diyos.
Ang mga perang malilikom, Panginoon, i-multiply mo pa ito, Panginoon, upang matugunan ng lahat ng needs ng iglesia mo. At patuloy, Lord, na masuportahan ng bawat isa ang mga lingkod mo, Panginoon. Maibigay namin ang aming pagmamahal sa kanila, Panginoon. Maibigay namin ang aming support ang nagbubuhat sa aming mga puso para sa kanila, Panginoon. Lord, maraming maraming salamat. Pagpalain mo po ang bawat isa. Pagpalain mo po ang mga tagapakinig at tagapanood, Panginoon. Maraming maraming salamat o Diyos. Sa iyo po ang lahat ng papuri, Panginoon, sa lahat ng pagsamba at pagdakila. Sa tanging pangalan ni Jesus. Amen at Amen. Amen. Tayo pong lahat ay tumayo. At bago po natin wakasan ang ating gawain sa araw na ito, uh, alay lang po natin ng papurit pagsamba ang ating Diyos na buhay. At um, gaya nga po ng, ni, ni Paul sa itinuro ni Prophetess Shannon, kung mananatili tayo sa Uh, kahit na magkaroon ng difficulty, hardship, and persecution ang buhay natin, kung mananatili tayo na kontento, ang goodness ng Lord ay laging sa, sa atin. Kaya naman, let us sing. Your goodness will follow us, Lord. Sacrifice of praise. I have seen your fire in your world, in the holy place, and I have known your mighty ways. I will remember your mercy and Lord your faithfulness. Lord your goodness. Lord your goodness and your love will follow me all the days of my life. I'm surrounded. Sacrifice of praise. I have seen your power in a holy place, and I have known your mighty ways. And I will remember your mercy and Lord your faithfulness. Lord your goodness, Lord your goodness, and your love will follow me all the days of my life. I'm surrounded by the favor of the Lord. All this and for
Sige po, tayo yung manalangin. Tayo, tayo po yung muko at pumikit. Dakilan Diyos, salamat po, Panginoon, sa araw at sa po na ito, o Diyos. Muli, Lord, nagpapasalamat kami, Panginoon, sa pag ginagamit mo, Diyos, na lingkod mo. Tunay nga, Diyos, sa kanyang aral at turo, Panginoon. Lord, kami po, Diyos, ay nabless, Panginoon, sa pangalan ni Jesus. Lord God, hallelujah. Like Pablo, o Diyos, dumanas po siya ng pagsubok, problema ng kanyang buhay, Panginoon. Lord, okay lang po sa kanya, o God, sapagat siya ay binigyan mo siya ng spirito ng matapang katapangan, Panginoon, sa pangalan ni Jesus. Magiging kami buhay, o Diyos. Lord God, naway kami rin po, o Diyos, ay maging matapang kami, o Diyos, sa pagharap namin sa mga problema at pagsubok, o Diyos, sa aming mga buhay, Panginoon. Lord God, salamat po, o Diyos, sapagkat Tunay Ama na maging tunay kami o Diyos sa harapan mo Lord God na kami o Diyos na kami manitili Panginoon sa harapan mo Diyos at binigyan mo nga po kami ng tapang Ama upang kami lumaban o Diyos at binigyan mo kami o Diyos ng espiritu ng katapangan o Lord upang kami magtagumpay o Diyos sa bawat problema pagsubok o Diyos sa aming mga buhay Panginoon kaya naman o Diyos salamat po Lord God sa pagkasaaral at turo ng lingkod mo, O Diyos, ay tunay nga, Ama, kami ay tumatag, O Diyos, kami ay tumapang, Ama, sa pagsunod namin sa iyo, Panginoon, sa pangalan na Jesus. Kaya, O Diyos, salamat po, Ama, sa lingkod mo, O Diyos, pagpalain mo siya, Panginoon, at marami pang blessing, Ama, na dumating sa kanya, O God, sa pangalan na Jesus. Lord, milyon-milyon ang darating, O Diyos, sa buhay niya, Panginoon, magayang kiyosip, O Lord, ito po'y angat, O Diyos, ito po'y lalaki, at marami pong kaluluwa, Ama, ang darating o Diyos, sarapan mo, Panginoon. Kaya dakilang Diyos, salamat po, Panginoon, maging sa aming boy O God. Lord, tunay nga, O Diyos, na tinugom na kami, Ama, sa lahat ng aming mga panalangin, Lord God. Hindi na nga po kami mag-alala, O Diyos. So, balit, O Lord, tinugom na nga po, Panginoon, at ipinagkalob na nga po sa amin, O God, sa pangalan na Jesus. Kaya dakilang Diyos, salamat po, Ama, sa araw at sa po na ito, Panginoon. Muli, O Diyos, pinagtibay mo kami, Panginoon, at sa aming pag-iwalay, O Diyos. Lord God, kami po'y uuwi at ligtas, O God, sa aming pansamantalatahan ng Panginoon. Mag-isa may pagbay, O Lord God. Ingat Ingatan mo nga po kami, O Diyos, sa pangalan na Jesus. Kaya naman, O Diyos, salamat po, Ama. Pakibalutan mo, O Diyos, ang banal mundo ka, lingkod mo, Ama. At tunay nga, O Diyos, na kami, natagsasod lamang po kami, O Diyos, sarapan mo, Panginoon. At tunay nga po, Ama, maging tapat kami sa aming pagbibigay, Lord God, sa pangalan na Jesus. At salamat po, O Diyos, sa patuwi kami na may galak sa puso at matagumpay po kami, Panginoon, sa pangalan na Jesus. Lord God, salamat, Ama, at pinabalik po namin sa iyo ang lahat ng kapuryan, kalawalatian, at pagdakila, O Diyos, sa pangalan na Jesus. Amen.